Welcome to this video, we'll walk you through how to do both elevator problems and problems with air resistance, as long as you can put up with my handwriting. So let's start off with an elevator problem. An elevator accelerates up at 4 meters per second squared from rest. What does a scale read for an 80 kilogram man? First you have to understand, understand that a scale or a bathroom scale reads the normal force on that's exerted on it. So you exert a force on the scale. The scale then tells you what force it's exerting on you. In order to do this problem, we first have to draw a free body diagram. So we start off with the uh, force of gravity going down. And that is 80 times 9.81. So you take the mass multiplied by gravity. It gives you 785 newtons. You then have the normal force going up which we do not know, and the acceleration is also up, 4 meters per second squared. It does not matter what direction the elevator is moving, only the direction that the acceleration is. After this, we can start a net force equation. So the net force in the y direction is equal to the top minus the bottom. So normal force is the top minus force of gravity is the bottom. We replace the net force with ma as per Newton's second law, and then plug in 785 for the force of gravity, and the acceleration is 4, the mass is 80, the acceleration is up, so that remains positive, equals Fn minus 785, and now we can solve for, seven, set, we can solve for normal force, sorry. First thing you have to do is add 785 to both sides and you get a normal force of 1,105 newtons. And that's the answer. So that wasn't too bad. Let's try another one. So what if we change that? So now the elevator is accelerating downwards. That changes a little bit. The force of gravity is still 785 newtons. Normal force is still up. The big difference is the acceleration is down. Still 4 meters per second squared. So our net force equation is still Fn minus Fg, and net force is still Ma. The biggest difference here is that the acceleration is negative because it's down. So if 80 times negative 4 equals Fn minus 785. This time when you solve for Fn, you get 465 newtons. So notice that when the elevator accelerated upwards, the normal force was larger than the force of gravity. So what the scale is reading is larger than the weight of the person. When the elevator goes downwards, or accelerates downwards, sorry, the normal force is less than the weight. So the, what the scale reads is less than what the weight of the person is. What happens if the elevator is not accelerating and just moving at a constant velocity? In this one, it doesn't matter whether it's up or down. So what is the acceleration when there's a constant velocity? Acceleration is zero. It doesn't matter what direction the elevator moves. Start off with the same net force equation. Plug in ma for net force. Now your acceleration is zero, and therefore your normal force is exactly equal to the weight. It does not make a difference whether it's going up or down, the elevator. The normal force, what the scale reads, is the same as the weight, if it's going at constant velocity. So those are all the elevator problems. Now let's try something that's thrown up or down, so we have air resistance on an object. A 9 kilogram ball is tossed up, and it has 6 newtons of air resistance. What is its acceleration? So we start off first, the force of gravity is down. If the ball is going upwards, the velocity is up. The force of gravity is 9 times 9.81. That gives you 88.3 newtons. So that's the weight of the ball. Now, in order to get the next force on it, the air resistance, we have to know the direction of the ball. That's why I drew the velocity going up. Air resistance always opposes the motion. So if the velocity goes up, the air resistance goes down. So F air is 6 newtons, which it's giving to us. 
we want to know in this problem what the acceleration is. You could also solve for the weight or the force of air, depending on what's given to you in the problem. In this one, it's just the acceleration that we're looking for. So no matter what you're given, you set up your net force equation. Net force in the y, top minus bottom. There's nothing on top this time, so everything is negative. So you have negative fg, it's going down, minus f air. So they're both going down, you subtract them both. Replace net force in the y with ma. fg is 88.3, f air is 6, so you have negative 88.3 minus 6 equals ma. Replace the mass with the 9, the kilograms. Don't replace mass with the weight of the object. That's a common mistake that I've been seeing. Replace it with the mass of the object. 88.3 minus 6 gives you negative 94.6. And now we can solve for A. Divide both sides by 9, and you get negative 10.5 meters per second squared. So the acceleration is down, which makes sense. If you throw an object up, the acceleration should be down, especially if the air is going down and the gravity is going down. There's no force going up. What happens if we threw the ball downwards? So now we have force of gravity down, same amount, 88.3 newtons. Except now the velocity is down. So the air resistance has to oppose that motion, has to go against it. So the air resistance is up. F air is 6 newtons, it's up this time. And we want to know the acceleration. Net force in the y is top minus bottom, so F air minus Fg. Replace net force with ma. So now we have top is 6 minus bottom is 88.3. 9a equals negative 82.3. When you solve for acceleration, you get negative 9.14 meters per second squared. So this is a little bit less than gravity. It's a little bit less than the last problem because you have a force from the air that's going up, opposing it, so it's kind of like slowing down the acceleration from gravity. All right, I hope this video was useful, and I hope you can come to class prepared.